Good evening, this is Melissa with the Stockswish.com, and tonight I am doing a video tutorial called Trading Equities 101, and this is created by me, Melissa Armo. I thought it would be a good idea to do a little tutorial video about day trading and trading in general so you can see what kind of things I'm doing in the class that I teach. This is just a little introduction to trading. Here's the basics. If you are new to the financial markets, then the best place to start is number one, learn the definition of technical analysis. We're going to talk about that tonight. Number two, learn how to read a Japanese candlestick. We're going to discuss that this evening as well. And number three, learn how to read a stock chart. And we're going to go over a couple examples for that too. So first things first, what is technical analysis? This is from dictionary.com and the definition of technical analysis in a stock exchange is an analysis of past price changes in the hope of forecasting future price changes. Now I'm going to show you some chart examples later on in the program here but the bottom line is technical analysis is the price action movements of these stocks and it charts them in a graph in the form of candlesticks that has the price movements and technical analysis is a study of those price movements of the past price movements and the current price movements of stocks that you can see when you're trading live so what is a candlestick okay this is from Wikipedia now I'm gonna go over two examples here just to give you the very basics on what is a candlestick okay now there's two candlesticks here let's go over this black one first this is a bearish candle. In some charts, this is black. In some charts, this is red. Now, what happens here? The stock opens at the top of this bar. It moved up, and this is the high price of this bar. It moved down, kept going down kept going all the way down. This is the low of this bar. And went up here, this is the close of this bar right here. Now I just went over an example of what this candle could have done if it was moving real time. I just gave you an example of what could have happened if this was a live moving candle. If you were reading a chart that was moving live in the market, that's what it could have done. It could have opened here, went up there, gone down here, and closed here. I'm just trying to show you an example to pretend that this is live. Okay. So that's what you see when you look at a chart that's happening in real time. This is, this is called a candlestick. Now, let's go over what this means. This is the opening price of this bar. So say this is $2.50. And say it went up here to $3. And say it went down here, all the way down here to the low was $1.50. And say it came up here and closed at $1.75. This is just an example, so you can get an idea. We don't see prices on this candle right now. We only see this bar, because I'm just showing you an example of what a candlestick looks like. But in real-time trading, there's numbers here, and there's prices all along the side that you'll see all along the side of your chart. So this is just an example. Now, what is actually happening here is first it's opening in this black bar, or which is sometimes a red bar. It's called a bearish bar, which means that the price opens and went down first. So it loses value. This bar is losing value. It's not going up, this bar is going down. So does everyone understand that? That's what's actually going on in this candlestick bar. It's just showing you what happened in this movement of this body. Now, I gave an example that this open went up here first, came down here, and then closed here. You can't tell what really happened in this bar because it didn't happen live. This is a make-believe bar. But I will tell you, when something has a tail like this, what could have happened also is it could have opened, went all the way down here, and closed if it didn't have any tails. So if it opened here and went down here and closed, what would have happened? It would have had no tails. This open would be the high, and the close would be the low. So there's another example of what a candlestick would look like. 
Now, we're not going to go over today all the possible candlesticks that there are in the market. There's quite a few. We can do that another time, but I just want to give you an example what one looks like without any tails and with tails. So there are bars where the open and close are the high and the low in bearish bars. So in this example, if there was no tails, it would have opened here at $2.50 and went down and closed at $1.75, which means in this bar that the trading price of the stock actually lost value. That's what's actually happening here. It, it went down, lost value. Now let's go to the next one. This is what we would call a bullish bar. They're green in some charts and they're white in other charts. For the purposes of this, we're using a white one. What happens? This one opens down here and goes up. So this is a stock that is going up in price. So it opens here. Say this opened at $1.75 and went up to $2.50. This is pretending, pretend there's no sticks, okay? So that's what happened here in this bar, if there was no tails. Now what really happened though, because we do have the tails, this is the low and this is the high, just like over here, you see that? But what actually transpired in this actual trading, if we were looking at this live, is this open here, went down, touched the low, came up, went all the way up here to the high and came down here and closed here. That's actually what I'm describing as the real action of what would this bar would look like if we were trading live. And I know that just because I've watched so many bars trade, that's what really would have happened. So the difference between this bar and this bar is, this is a bullish bar where the price went up, this is a bearish bar where the price went down. How do we know that? Because the open was here and went down and closed here. The open was here and went up and closed here. This is very simplified, but I'm just trying to teach you a little bit about a candlestick tonight. So, what is a candlestick chart? This is from Wikipedia as well. A candlestick chart is a style of bar chart used primarily to describe price movements of a security derivative or currency over time. It is a combination of a line chart and a bar chart in that each bar represents the range of price movement over a given time interval. It is most often used in technical analysis of equity and currency price patterns. So, in a candlestick chart, we have many candles, candlesticks, just like I showed you here. There's lots and lots of candlesticks, and they're all recording the price action of the stock. Now, they don't all look like this. As I said earlier, there's many different kinds of candlesticks. We're not going to go over that tonight because this is just a basic, basic lesson on chart reading and technical analysis. So, candlestick chart has many candles together. And it's used to describe the price movements of a security over time. That time could be a day chart. It could be a monthly chart. It could be a weekly chart. It could be a one-minute chart. It could be a five-minute chart. It could be a two-minute chart. It could be any time period you want to put in there. They even can do tick charts. Now, part of charting is you can use certain indicators. I do not use any other indicators other than moving averages when I trade. I don't have a million moving, I don't have a million indicators. I like to keep it simple so that I'm focused on really what's happening with the price movement. And when you have too many indicators, I think it gets too overwhelming then and you're trying to figure out too many things and by the time you figure it all out, you've missed your entry and your exit on the stock you're trying to trade because it took you too long to decide what the heck to do with too many indicators. I'm a big believer in keeping indicators simplified. So I only use moving averages in my charts. Now, I want to go over what a moving average is here. In statistics, a moving average is also called a rolling average and sometimes a running average. It refers to a statistical technique used to analyze a set of data points by creating an average of one subset of the full data set at a time. So a moving average is not a single number, but it is a set of numbers, each of which is the average of the corresponding subset of a larger set of data points. A simple example is if you had a data set with 100 data points, the first value of the moving average might be the arithmetic mean, which is one simple type of average of data points, 1 through 25, for example. The next value would be the simple average of data points 2 through 26, for example. 
and so on and so forth, until the final value, which will be the same simple average of data points is 75 through 99. The size of the subset being average is often constant. This is very important, as is in the previous example, but it doesn't need to be. But for the most part, it is in reference to trading. Now, what does this mean? A moving average is an average of price over time that's on a chart for any period of time. It's giving you an average. So I use an 8-period moving average, a 20-period moving average, a 50-period moving average, and a 200-period moving average. And it goes by dates. So we're going to go over some examples. I know this sounds complicated right now, but it's really, really not. I just wanted you to understand the real definition of a moving average that it's not one specific number, it's a rolling average, a running average. And I use simple moving averages on my stock charts. A simple moving average is the unweighted mean of the previous data point. For example, a 10-day simple moving average of closing price is a mean of the previous 10 days closing price. So this is NLY. Now, here's a chart. I want to try to go over a couple things we've talked about already in this chart. This red line is a 200 period moving average. This is the biggest moving average I use in my chart, and it's taking the average rolling price over every 200 days that this stock actually trades. This is a daily chart. So every 200 days, it's averaging the price, and that is creating what this line looks like. So it gives you an idea what kind of trend is the stock in. Okay, so it's almost, this, this is a very interesting one, because it's almost flat. Look at it, this 200, it's kind of curving down, but it's it's pretty much flat. I mean, this is a pretty flat moving average to be in a daily chart. So this is saying, hey, over the last 200 days, the stock price, look, in the last 200 days, the stock price really has kind of been neutral. If you look at the 200 period moving average, it's not in a full solid straight uptrend or downtrend. It's almost looks like it's flat or sideways because look at the 200. And then look, if you look at the whole chart, every time it starts to go up, it's pulling in. It's going up, it's pulling in. It pulled in a lot here. This, this big pull in here helped to create the, pulling this 200 down. Do you see that? And then it came up again. So really, if you block this off here and this here, if you look at the resistance levels and you look at how this chalk is, the stock is trading, it's really in an area here. It's really not in a full uptrend. It's not in a full downtrend. It's pretty much a sideways pattern if you want to go back. You see that? Because the line is, is almost flat. Now, these other ones, I use this one here, this greenish one, I use as my 50 period moving average. This is saying over the last 50 days, that the stock actually has been, it looks like it's been almost in an uptrend over the last 50 days. It's taking an average price in the last 50 days. It goes all the way up here. This is the 20, this blue one here. This is taking an average price of the stock every 20 days. Boy, that one's even more almost in, a, in an incline. Look at it. Now it's flattened off here, but it really was in a nice incline up until this point here before this drop off. And this is the 8 prime moving average. This is the shortest one I use. So it's going to be data condensed in a eight, every 8 days this thing is moving. So this one moves a lot more. This also looks like it's an uptrend, but whoo, look at this. When this happened, look at how that thing curved down. Now it's starting to pull up again. So does everyone understand that's the moving averages? Now, we're also going to look at candlesticks. As you can see, I use the green ones and the red ones, not white and black ones on my charts when I'm trading. But just to show you an example, every one of these candles is a full day of trading because I'm looking at a daily chart. So let's just pick out a couple here to give you examples of what actually took place based on what we just read about an open and close and the low and the high of a candle. 
So, this big bar, let's look at this big bar because it's so big. What happened here? This opened here, went up, did a little tiny tail, went hard down, all the way down, well, all the way down here, which is the low. So up here was the high. It would open and went up, and so it made that little tiny high, then immediately fell all the way down to the low, and then went up a little bit and closed right here. And this was the close. So this is the high, this is the open, this is the close, and this is the low. And that's what took place in this bar, and so it's red because there was selling that was happening in this bar. This is a bearish bar, selling, selling, selling. People sold out of this stock that day or short of it and created this big bar going down. Now, let's look at this other big bar. This is a Whopper 1-2. Look at this big tail. This one opened, went up, tiny, tiny little tail there, and then went down a lot. Look how much that went down. And then in the same day that made a huge move down, it retraced more than half of the move in that day. So it actually had a nice big rally into the, into the end of the day or the afternoon, whatever it happened here, because it closed all the way up here. Lost a lot of value in that day, but look at how it regained itself. And then look what happened the next day. It held. Where did it held? It held right here in this 200. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So let's look at this bar. Remember, this is a green one. So this is a bullish bar. There's buying in this one. I know it's not a big green one, but it's a, it's a little green one. So what happened? First, this opened here. Remember, this one opens in the opposite direction of the bearish ones. So it opened here, went down, touched right on there. Look at that. Beautiful. And bounced up and went all the way up and turned itself green and closed up here. That's what happened on this one. Looks like it almost ran out of day because the next day it gapped up and opened right over here and said, I want to keep going. There's no stopping me now. This is another bullish bar. It opened, went down a teeny weeny little bit to the low here, and then immediately went all the way up. Had a nice big day here and then came down a little bit and closed right here. So let's look at some more examples. This is BWS. This is more chart reading. I want to look at another example here. Just let's look at all the moving averages first before we look at the candles again. Now see the difference of this 200 period moving average. You can see this is a nice, nice incline. It's a nice straight line. It's an, on an incline. You can immediately look at this and say, look at this. This is on an incline. This one's on an incline. This one, this one. This stock is in an uptrend. Clearly, there's no... Neutral bias here, no confusion. This stock is in an uptrend. Every period moving average is perfectly aligned. Look at that. Can't get any more perfect looking than that unless it was a hill or a mountain. They're all stacked on top of each other. So this is a 200. Showing how it's moving up nice and steady. Keeps going higher. This is the 50. This is the 20. And this is the 8. Now, there was a couple pull-ins in the 8, but remember, the 8 is a shorter time frame, so you're going to have little little bumpies like this every time it pulls in. And lots of times when these pull in, just what they create is buying opportunities for people that want to buy at a little bit cheaper of a price because they see that based on these other moving averages, the stock is on the, on the uptrend. It's moving up. Now, let's go over here. You see where the price is here on this right-hand side, the way I have my chart set up. You can set up your chart any way you want, but this is just how I set them up. And here's another bearish bar. This one open looks like it has a dinky, tiny tail there. You can't even see it. But it did open and dink up, and it dropped hard here, all the way down here to the low. This is the high, the open, the low, came up here and closed right here. Closed right there on that 20. Look at that. Look at, do you see how important having these moving averages are? to give you an indication of where these things might land themselves for targets in the day or where they open or close. Now, let's look at this one here. This is another green one. This is a bullish bar, open down here, rallied up, did a little topping tail here. It's a dinky one, and then closed up here. But this is a lot of buying in here today for this stock. There was nothing bearish about it. Now, this is another one. This is CN. This is its daily chart. These are all the daily charts we're looking at. I want you to just see the difference in how these moving averages look. This is another 200 that looks 
looks kind of flat. Looks looks really flat compared to the last one we just saw, BWS. And you see these other moving averages. Now this is a 50. It squeezed down here and touched this 200. Then it tried to go up here, and now it kind of is curving itself down. This is the 20. Started to curve up here. Then it came in. Almost touched this 50, was trying to recover here and go up, and now it's turning down again here too. And look at the 8. Had a nice little rally, went up, plunged all the way down here. Remember, this is only every 8 days, so this one changes a lot, this 8 period moving average. Scooped around here, it almost touched this 50, went all the way up, had a nice little rally, and now this is on its way down too. And look at this. this uh, because of this gap here, because of this bar, this moving average is pointed way down like this is like a sharp decline here see that so let's just look at a couple bars here let's look at this is a different looking bar let's look at this one today this one opened open down here it's a tiny green head but it opened there went down See that? Went all the way up. This was all green actually when the this was actually moving. This was total greenness up here during the day. We can't see it happening, but that's what it looked like live. And then it came all the way back in. Closed here. This is almost like a neutral bar because it went down, retraced all of it going down and rallied up and then came all the way back in from it being up and only had a green little body there. This is a neutral bar. Now what happened here with this one in real time? Open, went up a wee little bit. This is the high, this is the open. Came crashing down, all the way down here to the low, and then barely could recover itself. I mean, it basically closed near the low of the whole day. That's a lot of selling. Very bearish there. Very bearish. Now down here at the bottom, I have all the different dates. You can see it's just the dates at the bottom. And these are little volume, volume, or it shows the volume. You can set up your charts any way you want, depending on what kind of platform you use. But I have volume down here with the dates, and then the price is over here on the right. So, getting started. I suggest you take a class to learn how to trade before you trade. I think that's the best thing that you can do for yourself. It's a good idea to read books, but I would never, ever trade without taking some kind of class from an instructor before you actually trade for real in the market. Because you're not going to get the same information from books because you can't ask questions to books and you can't get live answers from questions in books like when you're in a class setting. And when you're in a class, you can ask questions and get answers and that's important. So I suggest you take a class to learn how to trade before you trade. I also suggest that you practice getting started by using a simulator without using real money before you trade real money. I think this is important to get used to pressing the buttons, especially when you're new to trading. Get used to the strategy you're doing, the plays, the entries, the exits. Press the buttons because it's important to get used to pressing those buttons, but do it on a simulator without using real money. And then I also suggest that you practice trading with small size positions until you get good at one strategy once you start using real money, when you're ready to get to that point. I am doing a class called the Golden Gap class on September 9th and 10th and September 22nd and 23rd. The definition of the class that I teach is a course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Now I'm not going to go over what a gap is here today because this is just an intro to trading. I will talk about that another time, but gaps are a specific strategy that you can use to trade those charts that we looked at. And I love playing gaps because they can have big moves on the day. And specifically, the class that I teach helps you to find the stocks that have the biggest moves on the day. I look at 26 points when I'm rating a gap in the morning to decide what to play. The other reason I love trading gaps and trading the gap play that I do is that I treat it in the morning. And most of these gaps have huge moves in the morning and are done sometimes by 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So you could trade in the morning and be done that quickly. 
I named my class the Golden Gap class because it is a way to make money, to make good money with small risk in a short period of time, and that's like gold to me. Because at the end of the day, time is money, and that's important to all of us. We have other things to do with our life, and if we can make money in a couple hours a day, and that could be our source of income and our living and our job, that would be a great life. It's like finding gold ever since I figured out how to find this gap and play it in the way that I teach. So the class information is a professional bearish gap system and the dates are September 9th and 10th or September 22nd and 23rd from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The cost is $1,500 and if you're interested, contact me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And again, here's my contact information. You can reach me at my YouTube site, which is Miss She Who Dares Wins. My Facebook page, which is The Stock Swoosh. My Twitter account, which is Twitter at The Stock Swoosh. And my email, again, is Melissa at the stockswish.com. If you're interested, please contact me. Thank you very much for your time this evening. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you learned something from this video. And again, if you have any questions, please email me at Melissa at the stockswish.com. And have a great night.